Hello, everyone. My name is Mary Francesca, and today I will talk about my project that I developed at the International Space University. It's a project of three months where I had the possibility to compare the plant growth between the hydroponic system and self-watering pots with lunar regolith. So this project comes from the necessity of a sustainable environment for the human set, future human settlement on the moon. So we need food, uh, food resources, and this means that we need space gardens. So the aim of this project is to analyze and compare the evolution of the lettuce in hydroponic and regulative based systems in a closed environment. There is the she environment, so the self-deployable habitat for extreme environments at the International Space University, where uh, I had the possibility to control variables as the carbon dioxide, the temperature, and the humidity. The first system that I compared is the Seth watering pot with lunar regolith. Uh, so basically these pots were connected to a solution with the fertilizer. And as a reference, I use the same system, but also with traditional soil. These systems were compared uh, with a nutrient field technique hydroponic system. There is particularly suitable for long duration missions. Uh, and it's a closed loop that um, helps, uh, that uh, guarantees a low risk of contamination of both the human uh, environment habitat and uh, the uh, lunar environment itself. So what, what, for what concerns the choice of plants, I decided to take into consideration not only logistic um, uh, points of view. So for example, the time of sprouting or um, the resistance of the plants, but also possible um, benefits for the astronauts. For example, I chose the lettuce of the good gardener and the Batavian lettuce because they have important properties as antioxidant power and high content in multiple vitamins. So in my experiment, I control multiple variables as the radiation, the fertilization, uh, fertilizer con concentration and the pH. And as a result, I analyzed the number of grown plants, number of leaves per plant, the average area, um, and the total area per plant, and also the refractance, but I will tell you why. First of all, uh, the seeds were irradiated of uh, X-rays uh, from uh, zero to two grays, uh, as you can see here. And uh, I compared the percentage of grown plants with the type of wavelength. That is the blue, blurred, and red case. As we can see, the blue and blue red case have a higher percentage of grown plants with respect to the red case. This is, however, probably due to a lower amount of water that was in the red case. But if we go back to the blue and blue red case, we see the we have a higher percentage of grown plants for uh, zero um, for lower uh, radiation uh, doses with respect to the higher radiation doses. This means uh, that probably the radiation induced damages increases with the increased dose of radiation. But now if we want to compare the uh, three different systems, so the hydroponic system in orange uh, the regolith one in azure uh, and the traditional one in green, we can see I compared the percentage of grown plants with the lead intensity uh, in three different ranges, the uh, low range, medium range, and high range. So in the case of the low range, unfortunately, I had just the uh, hydroponic system data, but for the medium and the high range, uh, I had the possibility to see that in general, the traditional, so the green case, uh, traditional pots have a lower performance with respect to other tools, to others. Uh, and the regolith one are higher performance with respect to the hydroponic in the medium range and is the upside in the high range. I also um, evaluated the average number of leaves per plant um, with respect to the lead intensity as before. And in this case, the regolith um, plants seem to be better performant with respect to the hydroponic system. 
Same discussion for the average leaf area. So the area of the plant, the leaves were uh, approximated to uh, rectangles for a bare measurement uh, and comparison. And here we can clearly see that the hydroponic system is way better performant than the regolith one. But at the end of the day, we don't wanna know uh, just the average area or the number of leaves, but the total amount of um, uh, plants, the, of leaves that we can eat uh, for the future explorations. So I multiply the average area per the average number of leaves to have the total area of leaves per plant. And here we can clearly see that the um, hydroponic system is perform way better performing than the regolith one. But at the end of the day, it's not important just the quantity, but also the quality. So I performed a qualitative analysis of, uh, the, um, of the spectrum of the reflectance of my plants. Uh, and here we can see a zoom in the red edge. There is uh, an indicator of the absorbance of the chlorophyll. And here, um, if uh, I have three spectrum from the regolith based plants in pink and the hydroponic system in blue, we can see that uh, the uh, regolith plants have a um, blue shift, so a shift toward blue uh, wavelengths. And this means that this is often associated to the presence of metals uh, in the plants and therefore associated to a lower, um, less healthy plants. Therefore, um, this indicates that probably um, the plants in the regolith pots are less healthy than the hydroponic system. Therefore, um, we can say that uh, the radiation induced damage increases with the increasing of the dose. Um, and also the important results, uh, very important and interesting result is that uh, the total area the, of edible leaves that we, that we can give to the astronaut is um, better performing for the hydroponic system and also the healthy uh, of uh, healthiness of the plants is better in the case of the hydroponic system due to the probably contamination of metals for the regolith plants. For future works, uh, is, is suggested to do an homogeneous uh, light, uh, a higher number of samples, and a more advanced spectrometer. So thank you very much for the attention.